is killing everybody. It's balanced scoring. The bench has got 12 points. Vizenkov, look what I found. Kings rookie and EuroLeague MVP Sasha Vizenkov is probably the best example of a below average athlete who can be successful in the NBA. He has 33 points in his NBA career and he has only dribbled two times. That's right, the guy doesn't need dribble to score. I'm also pretty sure he's only behind Steph Curry in terms of how much he moves off the ball, making him a unique big man in today's NBA. Let me show you how that should help Vizenkov to have a successful career in the NBA. Off to Vizenkov, sidestepping three. He's good. That's a confident stroke. The best basketball league in the world has not seen a forward like Vizenkov. Yes, this is a bold statement, but his combination of quick release and off-ball movement are something else. It's early and his teammates are just getting used to it, but the Kings forward is doing what he did best in Europe, cutting without his defenders even realizing it. Sometimes it doesn't result in anything as his teammates might not notice him or have a good shot themselves. Other times these cuts all the way from one corner to another create a wide open attempt for a 28-year-old NBA rookie. Side note, this this happened on Vizenkov's second NBA possession. The guy did not waste any time. While watching him closely in Europe and now in the NBA, sometimes I feel like he's John Cena of basketball. It looks like the opponents just can't see him on the court sometimes. Even LeBron got surprised here. And although the number one all-time scorer in the NBA tends to relax sometimes in the off-ball defense, he's in a good position to stop the first backdoor try by Sasha, but it doesn't end here. He cuts all the way to the strong side on the empty corner pick and roll while LeBron sees him way too late. Too bad the ball bounces out. Bigger NBA courts are perfect for the way Sasha plays. There are tons of spaces to move and cut. Watch his defender occupy a low man's held position in the paint and try taking a charge on JaVale McGee. Vizenkov is one big step in front of him. Quick baseline cut as Bulgarian scores while his defender is still thinking he might draw a charge on McGee. Here is an empty side pick and roll that Sacramento love using. CP3 is the low man here that helps on McGee. Peyton and Kaminga on the weak side should cover three people, but look at the size of this gap between the two. You know Vizenkov is breaking it and Chris Duarte is patient enough to wait for him arrive. In the other clip, Monk keeps it himself instead of an extra pass to Sasha and Hashimura is like, oh thanks, I was quick to close out, my work is done here. But Vizenkov cuts behind his back a millisecond after not receiving the extra pass and Monk finds him just before landing on the hardwood. His constant relentless movement is why I think he will be successful in the NBA. But for now, there are situations where neither his opponents nor his teammates find him. Other times, he misses some great looks created by his movement. I believe it's just a matter of time until he gets himself accustomed to the NBA more and his teammates realize where and when to expect him. Because despite Sacramento probably being one of the best fits for Sasha in the entire NBA, they definitely don't find him open every time now. Of course, he also has to earn his reputation by being efficient. Like here, Colby Jones sees the cut and rewards Sasha for it. By the way, quick question, how many times you have seen the Bulgarian dribble until now? A lot of people thought Sabonis being an offensive hub in Sacramento should make Vizenkov's transition to the NBA smoother. And these two have connected already. But the thing is, these two haven't been on the court together that much. There is an underlying reason here. Kings coach Mike Brown realizes that with the two Europeans together he doesn't have enough rim protection and rebounding length. That's why so far he has paired Vizenkov with JaVale McGee who helped in both of those areas. As I mentioned in the beginning, Sasha is definitely not as fast as the majority of the players here in the NBA, and many teams look to attack him, so having McGee in behind to help out is often huge. But there are two sides of this story. Offensively, JaVale can't offer the same vision Sabonis does. I love this connection between the two. Thomas gets the rebound, starts the break. While he's still on his own three-point line, notice him shout to Vizenkov to be ready for a handoff to not run away. It takes some time for Sasha to realize the Lithuanian wants this quick action for him and it's a first dribble and a three-pointer for Vizenkov. God. Let's rewind this back a little bit. I think this handoff with Sabonis could be deadly with Sasha running for the ball. 
Since Domas isn't recognized as a shooter from deep, often his defenders back up in the paint like Anthony Davis does here. But Sabonis is a great screener as he catches Christian Wood there and doesn't allow him to cut under easily. Plus, the big guys are not as efficient as guards in screen navigation. So all in all, I would expect more handoffs between the two in the future. You can also expect us to give out this Yanis jersey once we hit 150k subs. Subscribe to our channel for a chance to win it as we are going to randomly select one fan to receive it. Now, going back to the video, Mike Brown hasn't ran much plays for Sasha and that's understandable since he is a rookie, but one funny thing already happened from Sacramento schemes. Kings like to use this cross screen while pick and roll happens up top. In this possession, Sasha is the lone guy left out from the action. However, a bit later, it's another corner to corner baseline cut that's becoming his trademark in the NBA. Then, a couple of days later against LA, he is involved in the same set. He can choose whether to use the cross screen and go inside or to move up with McGee setting a down pick. That's an easy choice for Sasha as the Lakers try to cut under and get punished for it immediately. Sacramento had the best offensive rating in franchise history last year, but are struggling to start and haven't found their rhythm yet. I see two main reasons. Missing the Aaron Fox for a few games was huge, but the Kings are simply missing a lot of good shots. They are generating the most wide open freeze in the league thanks to their spacing and flow in the offense, but simply aren't connecting. Same with Vezenkov. He has missed quite a few good looks, but in my eyes, it's only one more reason to believe he will be successful in the NBA. He is a fantastic shooter and we have already heard his teammates boasting about his release already in the preseason. The shots will be there. Larger court helps a lot as Vezenkov is quite open anytime the opponents stay on the nail to help tag the rolling big or to close the passing lanes. The Bulgarian knows how to respond. He fills in behind as pick and roll happens to keep the perfect spacing and to increase distance for this defender to come back. Oh, and look, he dribbles even though it didn't look necessary against CP3's closeout. I guess even he feels the need to do it every once in a while. That's a confident stroke. You might think, okay, the NBA players haven't seen this type of movement, but what about Vizenkov's defense? The Bulgarian himself has admitted that speed in the NBA are insane and it'll take time for him to adjust. I did not expect anything else. Just like NBA guys coming to play for Europe have a learning period, the same goes for EuroLeague players crossing the ocean. Sasha hasn't been awfully bad in ISO defense even though quite a few teams and players targeted him immediately. He even stopped LeBron's post up once. Of course, there are moments where his lack of above average lateral speed is clear, but he has allowed less than one point per possession defending ISOs. That's a great success for an NBA rookie with below average athleticism and I am intrigued to see how he will fare going forward if his minutes increase. On the other hand, I'm wondering if Trey Lyles coming back after an injury won't affect negatively Vizenkov's minutes. However, I'm pretty sure that once on the court, EuroLeague MVP will find a way to contribute. Vizenkov, good ball movement, there's McGee. His off-ball movement is second to none among big guys in the NBA, and this unique quality will cause havoc every time he's on the floor. It'll take time for his Sacramento teammates to adjust, but once they do, expect a lot of I did not see that coming moments. Do you agree Vizenkov will be successful in the NBA? And how would you like Mike Brown to utilize him? Let's discuss all of these things in the comment section down below. Please don't forget to like this video as it helps us grow and I'll see you in the next one.